am not a polyglot. Hello everyone, it's Beat. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad to have all of you here. For those of you who don't know me, which I guess is all of you since this is my first video, technically my third, but I did record the first two videos in time-lapse mode, so I had to scrap those. My name is Bianca, and I study the brain for a living. And right now, I'm learning Chinese. Fairly adequately, I would say. If you came here to learn the best way to learn a language, the most tried and true methodology that will guarantee you fluency in six months or less, you have not come to the right place. No, this isn't a clickbait video, and I don't want my channel to be a clickbait channel. Challenging myself to learn insert language in one month or less videos, but that's not really realistic. But you probably already knew that. I am not fluent in Mandarin, I still suck pretty badly, and I am essentially a glorified translator. But I have made significant progress in a relatively short period of time and I just want to share about my experiences. In this video, I'll be talking about said progress with stats, general methodology, and some of the resources that I use. The methods that I use do have support from cognitive research and the linguistic community, which is probably why I've been able to improve so quickly. Measuring fluency is a tricky thing, so I'll do my best to be comprehensive, but it won't show the complete definition of what fluency is. I started learning Mandarin intensively in September of 2020, but dabbled here and there over the summer. I didn't really learn much besides the most common pronouns, how to say hello, how to say goodbye. Oh, and nature found the map. It's been a little over six months of intensive study. Currently, I know around 1,006 unique characters and around 860 words. I use the HSK textbooks, which has levels from 1 to 6. And these are pretty standard. They teach you the standard dialect of Putonghua. The recommended time frame for learning each level in this textbook series is as follows. HSK 1 recommends one college semester's worth of class study to learn 150 words. For HSK 2, two semesters. HSK 3 recommends three semesters. HSK 4 recommends four semesters for a cumulative total of 1,200 words. According to this timeline, in order to get to the halfway point of HSK 4, which is where I'm at right now, it would take eight semesters or four years worth of language learning courses. Personally, I think this is a pretty extensive timeline but that just kind of shows the inefficiency of the majority of language learning courses. So here's my timeline. I went through HSK 1, including all the practice exams, in one month. HSK 2, two months. HSK 3, in one month, and I'm projected to go through HSK 4 in 10 weeks. Currently, I'm on lessons 9 and 10 in HSK 4, since I go through two chapters a week. After I finish an HSK level, I also take all the practice exams in each of the workbooks. Across the three levels so far, I've gotten between 85 and 100% accuracy with this method. I am able to recognize a little over a thousand characters and write around 860 of those characters. Around 70% I can do from memory, 30% are so iffy at times, but I think that's okay because writing isn't as much of a priority right now. I can always improve that in the future. Now for speaking, I can probably speak at an HSK 2 level. You may be wondering, Bianca, didn't you just say that you can recognize a thousand words, you can write 860 words, you're at HSK 4, why is your reading and listening comprehension so much higher than your speaking ability. And the reason for that is I don't want to say things improperly. I don't want to train myself to translate from English to Mandarin because that'll develop bad habits that I'll just have to break later down the road. When I have a thought, I don't want to have to think, this is it in English, this is it in Chinese. Instead, I want to know how a Chinese person would say that idea. An example of this is the sentence. Now, translated into English, it means a person's life can have nothing, but it can't be without friends. Moreover, one must have real friends of their own. 
Now let's look at the differences between these two translations. Chinese has way more run-on sentences, while English prefers brevity. The way that a Chinese person and an English person express the same idea is different. Here is a literal translation of the sentence. This is kind of like a Chinese person trying to express this idea by translating from Chinese to English. People throughout life can nothing have, but can't not have friends. Moreover, have to must have oneself real of friends. Clearly that sounds wrong. Even though Chinese grammar is very similar to English grammar, and you've probably heard that before, it's not one to one. You can't plug and chug an English word and translate it into Chinese or vice versa. That's why we have things like lost in translation. This is why I don't practice speaking. My listening skills are definitely lower than my reading skills, but that's to be expected because listening is more of an ambiguous activity as opposed to reading. You have the transcript, you can slow down, you can go back. With listening, you kind of have to just move on if you don't know what you heard. I'm able to understand around 10 to 40% of native content depending on what the topic is. If it's a topic that I know a lot about, know a lot of vocab about, it's a little bit higher. If it's a topic that I don't know much about, it's much lower. That's everything I know thus far. My methodology, although a little bit intensive, is a realistic approach to language learning. Before I start with my process, we kind of have to preface this conversation with this. What is your goal? Is it simply having a conversation with an IE at a local Chinatown bakery? Or do you want to be able to understand audiobooks, read novels, watch Chinese TV shows or variety shows? How quickly do you want to reach that goal? One year or five years? Knowing what your goal is will change the way that you study. For me, I want to achieve a high level of fluency, also known as native life fluency in the language learning community. Now that means I have to study more intensively and regularly in order to reach my goals. Here is the harsh truth. You cannot become fluent in a language just by studying 30 minutes a day on Duolingo. That's not gonna happen. If you want to just dabble in a language just to have fun, then that's perfectly fine. But if you truly want to learn a language, you can't use apps. Language learning is not easy. So here is my method. Refold, formerly known as MIA, formerly known as AJAT, formerly known as Stephen Krashen's Input Hypothesis for Language Acquisition. That was a lot of words. Essentially, my method is this, comprehensible input, equals language acquisition. I am not learning language, I am acquiring language. I first learned this hypothesis from this guy named Matt versus Japan, who pretty much became a language learning guru early in my Chinese studies. He learned Japanese to native-like fluency and native-like pronunciation in around two, two to four years, which honestly sounded like a scam at first. I watched all of his videos, which kind of boils down to this. The more that you listen, you read, you immerse yourself in content that you can understand, the more you'll acquire, which through time will lead you to fluency. This is all it takes to learn a language, but it's not a fancy or aesthetic program. You don't use five to 10 apps to learn the vocab, learn the grammar and apply it in different situations. You learn words, actively recall them through listening, through reading, through watching content, and you keep doing that until you're fluent. For a more detailed method, you can go to the Refold website, which goes through all the stages, but I'll just give a brief overview of how I've applied this to my language learning process. I separate my time into active learning, putting my entire focus into the vocab that I'm learning, passive learning, putting Chinese on in the background, not really paying attention too much, and active recall which is forcing my brain to retrieve the information that I've actively learned in the past. Ideally, you'd want to get all of your vocabulary, all of your sentences from native content because you want to sound like an actual person and not like a textbook. And I'm sure if you've grown up in the United States going through language learning courses or Spanish classes in high school, you've learned a lot of weird sentences. Now, technically it could be correct, but when asked the question, how are you doing? Have you ever responded with, I'm fine, thank you, and you? No, it's too formal, and the phrase I'm fine has a whole lot of nuance that isn't explained in a textbook. Now, how do you know what the real life usage of I'm fine is? Not in a textbook. 
you figure it out by hearing it in a variety of different contexts through reading books, watching TV, listening to podcasts. But the challenge with this is that when you're a beginner, native content is way too difficult. What, what can we do about this? Sacrifice some of the natural language and nuance in the beginning to learn vocabulary as quickly as possible in more comprehensible ways. Yeah, textbook sentences may not be ideal, but in my perspective, the role of a textbook is to help you learn new words, learn new grammar structures, so that you can notice and later acquire that vocabulary when you listen, read, watch native content. On the topic of learning grammar structures, I don't recommend going through conjugation tables, memorizing all the usages for all the things that you're learning, but rather, view grammar as a way to make content more comprehensible. When you say something in English, do you think of the specific grammar structures that are used to formulate that sentence? I need to add a subject and then a verb and then an adverbial modifier for that verb, but that verb is in the past tense, so I need to add a past tense conjugational marker. No, that is too taxing on your brain. Your brain can't do this in real time. You just know what sounds right, and what sounds wrong. And many times you don't even know why it's right. You build up a grammar intuition. You expose yourself to so much content that you learn to feel what is right and what is wrong. So which book do I choose? I've tried a few Chinese textbooks, but I found that the most enjoyable and effective ones are those with minimal grammar explanations and that utilize extensive stories to introduce new vocabulary. Reading through a story helps solidify vocabulary more easily than unrelated example sentences. And that is why I use the HSK textbooks. They use dialogues and stories and later mini essays, which are great for learning connecting words and expressing abstract thought and ideas. They also don't have topic chapters where you learn all the colors in chapter one and all the vehicles in chapter eight. Memorization in topic list is very difficult on your cognitive pathways, which is probably why you took years and years of Spanish or French, but don't remember most things. Mm. How can I learn vocabulary if I'm given an example sentence like this? My favorite colors are blue, green, and yellow, but I really don't like gray and brown. It's easier to memorize less vehicles, but learn how to use those vehicles in different contexts. I went to the store in my car. My car broke down. Do you want to take a ride in my car? Once I learn new vocabulary, I put them into a space repetition flashcard software. Personally use Anki, which essentially just hijacks your learning and memory pathways. Repeating words over and over again isn't efficient because your brain isn't forced to retrieve that information. The harder a task is for the brain, the more it reinforces it. It prunes things that aren't useful, kind of like removing the dry and withering leaves from a plant to divert resources to the healthy leaves and help it grow better. How do we prevent the brain from pruning our language learning? Force the brain to recall that information right before it's forgotten. So now that I have vocabulary, I review that vocabulary in my space repetition flashcards, and then I reinforce it through immersion in content, reading graded readers, watching TV shows, listening to podcasts, and that is language acquisition in a nutshell. And this is all I've been doing. It's pretty simple, it just takes a lot of time. And in the next video, I'll go through the entire process of how I do this, how much time I spend on each of these categories. I hope you guys enjoyed this rather technical video. And in the future, I'll try to show some of the joys and the struggles of my language learning journey. So hopefully, you'll stick around for that. I hope everyone has a lovely day, a lovely evening, and a lovely language learning journey. Have a good one.